I mentioned in uh, one of the videos about this truck that the key fob doesn't work. And um, I assumed it was just a bad battery because that's pretty common. And I changed the battery and it still doesn't work. And so it makes, makes me think it's maybe the fob. And so I took the fob apart and uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's at least in part uh, the fob. So I got a new one. I'm gonna show you how to program new key fobs in these trucks. The process is actually pretty simple, so we're just gonna dive right in. Kind of take a second before we dive in, um, give you an idea of what I'm talking about. So I took this apart. This just comes apart with the bottom here. There's a little, a little cutout and you can pop this open with a screwdriver. Probably not one quite that big, All right? Uh, you, you may be hard to tell on camera. This is super sticky. Got all kinds of grime and some kind of residue, some grossness in there. This is, you can look at that. You can see that's pretty gross. The button did fall off when I was trying to clean this. So I cleaned this with some electrical contact cleaner. Not this part, but this part, the little board. The battery goes there and these are the actual buttons. So when you push these buttons in, this sits inside of here like this. When you push these buttons in, you know, in fact, with that button removed, you can see it pretty well. That button, right, pushes down on that contact. On the back side of these buttons, a little black dot there, there's some like capacitive, some kind of conductive material that's on the back side of these buttons. And so when you push the button down, it makes a circuit here. So what's common with these, especially with the GM ones, I've had a few of these actually happen this way. The stuff on the back side, whatever that material is, wears off or gets, gets smeared off with some stuff. And then when you clean it, it's really, really thin. It's really, really fragile. And you can see even this button's about to about to pop loose here. This, you know, it wears out the rubber, let alone this tiny, tiny, like razor thin material that's on the back of that button. So what I've done in the past is actually take some like aluminum tape or copper tape or something like that and, and put it, stick it on here. And then it will act as a new capacitive touch point and work with here. Copper works best. I work for an old company that did computer hardware. And we had copper rolls of copper tape. And so I just cut off a tiny little square and stuck it to the back side of that. I actually, the one time I think I actually like super glued it because the sticky stuff on the tape wasn't quite strong enough. And they were great for a while. And then those things came loose and then those little copper pieces floated around. And as they floated around, they would just randomly touch the board <laughs> and it would do some weird things. So I think that's what's happened here because I've changed the battery. I've cleaned it off. I've cleaned the back side of this. I didn't clean the front yet, but um, it is not working. So my, my assumption is the board itself is probably fine. And at some point you can order these real cheap. I'll just order a new case with a new uh, button and, um, and we will reprogram it. So I've got a new one and they're relatively cheap. I don't remember what this one was, 15 bucks or something like that. They're not terribly expensive. I think I got it on Amazon. I'll put a link down below for it. Uh, you can get a bunch of places, anybody that sells auto parts. So most of your big box auto parts stores, uh, various online sources sell these things. You just have to reprogram it. And actually the programming stuff is relatively simple. So let's get inside the truck and I'll show you how to do it. I've got key. Here's my new fob. I also brought in the old fob to use as a, as a test. I'm going to take, try to program the new fob. That should work. And if it does, I'm going to take that board out of this case and put the new board in and try that and see if that works. That'll tell me if the board is any good. And if so, I'll just get a new case and I have two fobs. So start, push the unlock button and hold it. Turn this key twice, all the way to run. Don't start, just to run, back, run, back. Two times, real quick. So that's it, it's in learning mode. Take your new fob, hold the lock and unlock buttons simultaneously. This can take 15, 20, 30, sometimes up to a minute. Well, we're waiting. There you go. Let's learn that one. So now let's take 
the old one and try to see if that one works. Let's try to see if we can relearn that one. If you do have any old fobs when you do this, you have to reprogram them all because it clears them all. So once you do this, if you don't, your old fobs won't work anymore. So this one appears to not be working. So it really was probably something on the circuit board. Give it a few more seconds and see. Yeah, it's not working. So the fob itself is not any good. So, no worries, we got a fob. Someday I'll get another one and we'll reprogram them. And we'll have to begin. When I reprogram the new one, I'll have to do it all over again. But uh, for now, one fob is probably fine and I may never actually do the second one. So once you're done, you just turn the key back to run. Hear the horn honk. Hear the doors lock and unlock and you're good to go. So, you know, not that bad, right? Program a new fob. Nice and fancy and new and, and the buttons work. If you can hear that. So we got lock works, unlock works. I right, try the panic button. We'll save that one for another day. This truck doesn't have remote start, so it doesn't have the remote start button. If you happen to notice on the uh, board, there is a button right about here on that circuit board. If you remember back there earlier in the video, there were four sets of coils. That is a button for a remote start, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I think the issue there is they just, they manufacture one set of circuit boards that have the, the various controls in them. And then it's just a matter of what, what set of buttons they give you, what, what case they give you, depending on the options for your truck. This truck doesn't have a remote start option, so I don't have that. There's also a um, rumor, I've seen some stuff online that you can program the newer style GM fobs for these older trucks. So maybe I'll pick one of those up instead of a, a second one of these older fobs and try it. The reason why, I don't really care that much about how nice they look, it's just a fob. But uh, you saw how dirty that other one was, right? That's because these buttons, these are holes. There's a hole in this case where those buttons pop through. And so stuff can get in there. It's not waterproof. It's, it's not, certainly not dirt proof as we saw. So the newer fobs are a sealed cover. So the whole, the whole front of the, of the fob is rubber and the, there's a, you know, buttons underneath that. So it's a little bit different setup and probably stays a little cleaner, maybe a little more resilient, maybe lasts a little longer. I don't know. Um, for now, this was 10 bucks and I did look it up. I said, I think I said earlier it was $15. It's only look it up. It's 10 or you can get a two pack for about 18. I think it was 17, $17.95 for a two pack. Whereas those newer fobs are, are about that 18 to 20, 25 bucks just for the new fob. So, you know, is it worth 10, $12 more for me? Not right now. I just want it to be able to lock and unlock and not have to use the key, right? It's first world problems. So that's good enough for me. Just a reminder, when you do put this in a programming mode, it will clear all of your fobs. So whatever fobs you might have already had, like if you're adding a fob, you'll have to reprogram all the key fobs that you want to reuse because it will clear all the old ones out. And so you just keep going through fob by fob and you can do kind of as many as you want. I don't even know if there is a limit. And then when you're done, you just turn that key back on and it uh, ends the programming mode and they should all work. Uh, relatively straightforward, pretty quick, kind of short video today. Hope that helps you as always. If you've ever tried one of those newer fobs, let me know, put it on the comment below or maybe if you want me to try it, shoot, I'll give it a whirl. Amazon's got free returns, right? We'll try it out. If it doesn't work, I'll send it back. If you guys have done it and it works, let me know. And if you've got a particular one that you think uh, works better than another particular series of these newer key fobs that are ones that work, uh, let me know. I'd appreciate it. Anyway, thanks as always for watching. I appreciate you guys very much. Hit that like and subscribe down there because like I said, you know, the subscribe and the bell and all that helps, helps the channel out, uh, helps with the voodoo algorithm that youtube has that nobody really understands but uh i would appreciate it have a good one guys we'll see you next time